Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session where we're going to talk about enterprise grade ETL and data preparation using Power Query and Data Flows. My name is Miguel Jopis, and I'm a program manager on the Power Query and Data Flows team at Microsoft. And I have a pleasure to be joined today by Ben Sack. Hey, Ben, how's it going? Hey, Miguel, all good. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about enterprise grade ETL and data prep. We're going to split this into a few different blocks. Um, the first one we're going to focus on discussing why do we need data preparation. And then we'll talk a bit about Power Query and data flows and how they help in this space. We'll do a bunch of demos as well. We'll, we'll have a very demo-centric uh, session. And we'll end with an update on capabilities that are coming to the product over the next few months, and also with a few a sneak preview uh, of, of those demos for those new features. Why do we need data preparation? So data preparation in today's world is actually very challenging. In one hand, it's really hard to find and connect the data uh, for, for end users who need to use it either for analysis or maybe app development and other purposes. Um, understanding what are the right locations for that data, whether it's files or databases, and even once you understand what it is it that you need to access, getting the right permissions, getting the right uh, credentials to access that data is really difficult. To make matters worse, the experiences to actually connect to those data sources and prepare data are fragmented. They are different, uh, varying by different products. And also the underlying technologies, uh, particularly when it comes to accessing the data source backends, are also you know, very heterogeneous, uh, which makes the task really hard. Um, also, you know, after being able to connect that data, in most cases, very often, if not always, data will need to be reshaped before you can actually derive value from it. This doesn't necessarily mean that the, the data is in bad shape or you know, uh, of poor quality. In many cases, that's actually the case. But it also means that even when data is clean and it's ready to be consumed, it's actually not in the exact shape that users need for what they're trying to do, the answers they're trying to get from their data. Uh, so that you know, data very often or always needs to be reshaped. In many cases, this shaping is actually one-off and it's hard to make repeatable. Um, and you know, as users would like to continue refreshing that data over time, having to redo the same tasks to actually get it into the right shape that they would like to use is very time consuming and you know expensive. To make things even, even worse, if you know connecting to a single data source was not hard enough already, we know that data never comes from a single place. Users very often need to actually combine data from multiple data sources, and that makes the complexity of their data preparation just exponentially grow. When we talk about big data, we always think about the volume of data, but there's actually three Bs that are associated to big data. The volume is clearly one, but also the velocity and the variety. The variety refers to the differences in data source structures, schemas, data shapes that need to be actually you know, consolidated and normalized in order to make sense of that data. And the velocity speaks to the differences in the rate of change of that data. If you think about it, you know, there are data sources that maybe change once a month or once a quarter, you know, financial results, uh, monthly sales numbers. But there are, on the other extreme, data sources that could change every hour or even you know, multiple times per minute. Uh, think about IoT devices and many other sources that are near real time. For a user, a non-technical user, to be able to actually combine all of that data together, make sense of it so that they can derive value, it's a really challenging task. A few quotes that actually validate that, that message. This one is from Gartner, one of the leading analyst uh, companies in the world. Um, that says that the data analysts spend up to 80% of their time on data preparation, which delays the time to analysis and decision making. So if you think about it, somebody gives you a week to actually complete a decision process, you're going to spend the first four days, the first four days of the week, uh, actually working on just getting ready so that on Friday, on that last day, you can actually make the decision. Isn't that painful and uh, expensive? Um, and that's even if you're lucky, because look at this other quote uh, from Harvard Business Review, which says that 75%, three quarters of the companies are not able to actually take action and derive value from the data that they collect, mostly due to the, you know, the, the disjoint systems and the data integration issues that they hit along the way. 
And one last quote, this is all actually a prediction from Garner, who predicted that sometime this year, by 2020, and this was a prediction from two years ago, that the amount of data produced by citizen data scientists will actually surpass the data produced by the quote, quote, professional data scientists. So what this really means is that not only we need to make the process easy and feasible for the user who's actually trying to integrate data and prepare data across these joint systems, we also need to democratize it and make it super simple because the demand for lower end, uh, you know, uh, skills to be able to do this job is actually growing more and more to the to the point that it's surpassing the professional, uh, you know, um, users um, doing this. So with that context, how does a tool like Power Query from Microsoft can help with that? Um, we talked a little bit about the variety on the data and, uh, you know, Power Query providing connectivity to hundreds of data sources. And that includes data of all sh uh, sizes and shapes. Power Query gives you a highly interactive and intuitive experience that allows you to preview data based on, you know, top 200 to 1,000 rows of data so that users get enough of a sense for what the data shape looks like and to understand the operations they need to apply, whether it's removing columns or filtering out some values based on profiling. Those capabilities are provided based on a sample of data, which also takes care of the data sizes and the data volumes challenge. The experience is very inter interactive, agnostic of the full data set size. It allows you to do things by example on the, uh, on the top uh, data uh, coming from that data source. And ultimately it will run over the entire data set once you complete uh, the design time uh, transformations and tasks. Uh, the experience we actually provide is consistent across uh, all of these hundreds of data sources. We provide 300 or more data transformations across all of these and they're consistent. We'll take care of compensating whenever a data source is less capable than others in terms of query execution. And the last point here is about combining data, which as we said, it's a big part of the challenge. Power Query provides seamless ways to combine data, whether it is by doing joins or unions, merge and append in Power Query terms, with fuzzy matching and many other technologies uh, along those lines that make uh, the task much easier. Power Query is the unified data connectivity and preparation experience and technology from Microsoft that ships across eight or more different Microsoft products. And we'll dig a, a bit more onto that over, over the next couple of slides. Power Query is available both as a desktop component that ships into products like Power BI, Excel, and analysis services, as well as online. The capabilities on both are consistent. Um, the mashup engine, which is the underlying query runtime behind Power Query, provides support for over 140 out-of-the-box connectors or data sources. These are actually extensible, as we will see uh, over the next couple of slides. Uh, we provide 300 or more data transformations, since things like filters, pivots and pivots, splitting columns, replacing values, removing duplicates, you name it. Uh, we have most of those uh, transformations and this is also an extensible set. We provide the ability to combine data across sources and uh, we provide a very code-free and visual experience as you can see in the screenshot here with a very centric view of the table that the user is connected to and lots of information about value distributions, histograms, profiles, error values that make their task easy. Just point a click at the data that you would like to transform or reshape and use the ribbon or the context menus to access those operations. As we were saying, Power Query provides over 140 data connectors today out of the box. Uh, what you can see here is an animation of the Get Data dialog inside of Power BI Desktop. As you can see, we have lots of connectors across different types of files, databases, the Power Platform, Azure data services, other online sources and services, and, and many other sources. Um, this is a combination of connectors built by us, by Microsoft, and also connectors built by the uh, community and the ISVs, third-party ISVs, who, for example, maybe own a data source or two. Examples here would be someone like Dinodo, who owns a data virtualization platform, building their own connector uh, uh, for Power Query and certifying it with us, with Microsoft, so we actually ship it as part of the product. And it's one of those 58 certified connectors that as you scroll through this uh, dialogue, they seem very seamlessly integrated with the product. And you may think they all come from Microsoft, but this is actually a strong community and ISB ecosystem around it as well. And on top of that, 
anyone, literally anyone out there could actually create their own custom connectors and easily plug them into Power Query. We see thousands and thousands of those connectors active every, every single day connecting to data. As we were saying, Power Query is also available as an online component that is integrated with many other products, um, namely things like data flows, which we're actually going to dig deeper uh, in a few minutes. Uh, within Power BI, Power Apps, uh, Dynamics 365 customer insights, we also have the Power Query capabilities embedded within other areas of the Power Apps experience. Power Automate, particularly to reshape and transform data on top of a SQL Server connector in Power Automate. And also within Azure Data Factory, which is uh, known as uh, ADF Wrangling Data Flows, which is soon actually going to be renamed to Power Query Data Flows for clarity. The capabilities here are very similar to what we were just describing in the desktop. Uh, just from a, a product maturity standpoint, we started the Power Query Online project uh, much later than the desktop experiences. So we're still closing the gap on some of those connectors. Uh, we are at about uh, 50 connectors in Power Query Online versus the 140 that we were just talking about in desktop. We're very quickly catching up towards that, and you will see that through the roadmap as well. With that, I'm going to hand over to Ben so Ben can talk to us a bit more about what are data flows. So Ben, what are data flows? Thanks, Miguel. So let's review what data flows are. Data flows are a self-service, cloud-based data preparation technology. Data flows allow customers to ingest, transform, and load data into either the common data service, uh, storage, Power BI workspaces, or even your organization's Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account. Data flows run in the cloud. They can be configured to run on demand or on a schedule. Data flow customers author data flow using Power Query Online, uh, which Miguel just uh, uh, reviewed uh, for us. So let's take a look at the steps that are required to author a data flow. So the process starts by uh, the application that hosts the data flow. And today, data flows are available in Power BI, Power Apps, or Customer Insights applications. The first step is to indicate which data source you want to get data from. And as Miguel mentioned, there's hundreds of cloud and on-premise data sources, and the list is uh, constantly growing. After you select the connector and authenticate to it, you can transform and reshape the data using the Power Query Online experience. Um, there's as Miguel mentioned, 300 plus transformations. Customers can write uh, their own custom mashup code to perform their own transformations. The options are limitless. Once you are done shaping the data, there are a few other configuration steps, like how frequently it would refresh. Um, and uh, sometimes if you load the common data service, you, you have an experience to map the entities in the data flow to common data service entities. You can also save data flows to Power BI workspaces or, as I mentioned, to uh, your own organization's Azure Lake, uh, Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 account, and that other services can consume the data. So one, one thing that's cool about analytical data flows is that they're composable. So data flows is a pipeline that loads data into a destination data source, but then you can actually create other data flows that can load data from these data flows. So if I'm in any one of the experiences that data flows available in, I can leverage instead of the hundreds of connectors and on-premise data sources that are available, I can choose the Power Platform data flow connector. And then what I'll see are entities that other data flows have created. I can continue on modeling them. These are called computed entities. And once uh, I've finished transforming the entities, I can load them into the same destinations that I mentioned before. One thing that's interesting with data flows that are composable is that when one data flow completes its refresh process, if you've composed another data flow on top of it within the same environment or workspace, that will trigger the downstream data flow to refresh as well. And in that sense, you can build complex data pipelines that actually stay in sync and refresh together. Where can data flow outputs be consumed from? So when data is loaded to Common Data Service, Power BI Storage, or Azure Data Lake Gen 2, you have a few options. In the case of Common Data Service data flows, you can consume the data from the data flows in uh, all four of these experiences using the Common Data Service connector. 
You can also consume the data from the Power Platform Dataflow connector if it was stored in a data lake, whether your organizations or a data lake within any one of these three products that is, uh, any one of these two products that are, is provided uh, to you by default. In addition, if you load data to your own organization's data lake, we store data flow data in what is called CDM folders, which is a standard that Microsoft uh, has uh, uh, developed in order to allow services to interop with each other on top of the lake without actually having to integrate service to service. What that means is once a data flow deposits the data in the lake, you can uh, obtain the data schema and the data from within the CDM folder using libraries or Azure services to consume the data. And then you can build data flows that basically uh, enable collaboration between all of the services that you see above and below here via the lake and the CDM folder standard. So what are common use cases for data flows? Data migration or ingestion into common data service entities. So a lot of times customers would like to sync data into the common data service and build power apps and flows on top of it. So that's uh, the one primary use case. Uh, another one is uh, lift and shift to the cloud, whether you have on-premise data sources that you want to make available in the cloud uh, in uh, Power Apps or in Power BI, you can leverage data flow with an on-premise data gateway to load data into the cloud and then Microsoft Cloud Services can consume the data very efficiently from that point on using the data flow connector or again, the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. Another application is business intelligence in Power BI. You can build reports, dashboards, and data sets on top of data flows and share those uh, dashboards and reports with people in your organization. You can also ingest data with data flows for use in Insight application. For example, Customer Insights leverages data flow to ingest data from multiple data sources in order to provide customers a unified profile of their customer across all these uh, data sources. Finally, AI Builder scenarios can be powered by data flows. AI Builder is a functionality within the Power Apps Maker portal that leverages data in common data service. And so the first step is leveraging a data flow to bring data into the common data service and then using AR Builder to consume it. With that, I'd like to switch uh, gears and uh, move to a demo. We'll kind of take you through creating standard and analytical data flows and then how the outputs can be consumed from Power BI. Okay, so we'll start by creating an analytical data flow. What I wanna do is uh, get data from a few data sources. I work at a international company and I would like to organize my order data with customer data and the employees that uh, submitted the order. Now I have orders from uh, Europe and rest of the world and they're in two databases. So you saw me getting data from SQL DW and then my second order table is uh, from a CSV file. So now I have all my entities here so I can start uh, transforming. And as you can see, the orders table has uh, the customer ID and employee ID, but not the metadata for those uh, customers or employees. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna append the rest of world orders and the European orders. So I'm gonna append queries and I'm gonna choose the first table to append and then the second table, and that's gonna create a new entity. Uh, it's first called append, I'm gonna rename it. Uh, this is gonna be the entity that has all orders. So now I have uh, the orders, but I don't have the customer information or the employee information in this table, but I do have them in other tables. So what I'm going to do now is join uh, these tables. So let's uh, join one table at a time. We'll start with uh, a customer ID. I'm gonna choose the customer table and then the column that I should join on. And there's a few join options. Uh, left outer, I'm trying to join everything from the first table uh, that matches everything from the second table. Uh, this is gonna add a new column for me and that column is gonna be the second table, but I would like to see the data in this table, so I'm expanding the column. And in this case, uh, company name, contact name, uh, they're pretty self-explanatory, so I am gonna uncheck use original column names as prefix. So I'm just gonna see those names and now they're gonna be expanded into the table. 
So you can see uh, they were added. And uh, now I'd like to see the employees that uh, uh, submitted the order. So I'm going to join that with the employee table. I did notice that uh, the employee format was uh, text and numbers, but uh, it should be a number. So I transformed it to a number really quick. And now I'm going to join again from the order table with the employee table and again left outer. And again, I'm going to have to expand uh, the columns. But over here, last name, first name, they don't make uh, enough sense. So I kept the prefix and now you'll see employee name um, and then the first name, last name. Next, um, I'm done. Uh, transforming my data. Now I need to decide how frequently it's going to refresh. I like to refresh every day at 2 a.m. to let the data settle. And then I selected the option to receive an email notification if the data flow fails. Now I want to load the entities to common data service and also demonstrate that uh, I can get data from the data flow I just created. So you can chain data flows and the first data flow is an analytical data flow. They're perfect for transformations. Um, and the second data flow is just loading it to common data service so I can use it in uh, a power application or power automate. Uh, this screen is the mapping screen. So this is a specific to common data service entities. It's normally a good idea to define a key field, um, creating a new entity so I can define the key field here. It's currently uh, saying that a key field cannot be multi-line text. So I just need to change it to text. Uh, multi-line text was the default. Uh, and uh, using a key allows me to make sure that every time I refresh the data flow, it's not going to uh, create new entities uh, if those entities already exist. So it's just going to update them. So now I have two data flows. Uh, one uses data from the other. And uh, next, I'm going to show you uh, how I can, uh, using the same experience in Power BI Desktop, get data from this data flow. So I'm going to quickly switch to Power BI. Going to hit get data and the Power Platform data flow connector. And the Power Platform data flow connector can show me data flows created in Power Apps environments or in Power BI workspaces. Uh, in this particular case, uh, we're going to go get data from the same data flow I created. So I'm showing you how it's possible to ingest and transform once and then reuse the data very easily with data flows and then. Power BI Desktop also uses Power Query. Same uh, experience, same look and feel, uh, but for a different use case. So that's the first demo, and I'm going to switch back uh, now to the presentation. Thank you, Ben. Let's actually take a look after looking at these awesome demos uh, to what's coming next. Here's a quick view on to the uh, connectors roadmap. And here's a recap on things that we recently shipped. As you can see, and as, as I was alluding to earlier, um, we are actually very closely, uh, you know, very quickly closing the gap uh, on Power Query Online connectors. And you see that we've released many, many connectors lately, including things like Google BigQuery, Amazon Redshift, Spark, Impala, ODBC, Azure Data Lake, Azure SQL Database and Data Warehouse, or Synapse Analytics connectors, and many more. Um, we continue to work towards making the experiences easy to use. Uh, so an improvement that you will see coming up in a few months to Power Query Online is the ability to do a one-time upload of a local file uh, within the file connector. So today, in order to bring data from a local file, you would actually have to use an on-premises data gateway, which we understand you know, introduces friction into the process. We're trying to make that much simpler. Uh, similarly, you will see a new connector, which is actually recently made available within Dataflows in Power Apps to Parquet files, allowing you to connect and you know reshape and transform data from Parquet files sitting within a Azure Data Lake storage account. We will be lighting up that connector also within Dataflows in Power BI and eventually within Power BI Desktop as well. We also made a lot of enhancements and uh, you know additions to both folder connectivity with connectors like the local and SharePoint folders, as well as Cube connectors. We recently released the SAP HANA and SAP Business Warehouse connectors within data flows in Power BI and Power Apps. 
Um, and we'll very soon also release connectivity to analysis services, both on-premises and Azure analysis services, Adobe Analytics and Google Analytics. So stay tuned to our blog announcements for that. Uh, on the desktop front, we, a few months ago, released the Hive LLAP connector. We're also coming out soon. Um, I think by the time we actually uh, publish this video in the late September, it will already be in market. We are releasing a new connector for Azure Databricks. And we're also releasing an updated version of the Common Data Service Connector, uh, giving you much better performance and direct query capabilities as well. Um, the last bucket here I have is for by example capabilities, which, you know, continuing with our effort around simplifying the experiences and making them more seamless, it expands on our web by example and column from examples capabilities um, to new data sources, particularly text, CSV files, and also automatically being able to detect tables from Excel and JSON files. So we'll uh, show you in a few minutes uh, a couple of uh, demos around those capabilities. On the transforms and query editor capabilities, again, lots of uh, great enhancements over the last few months. The one that I wanted to call out here as coming soon is the ability to use fuzzy matching capabilities as part of grouping values, allowing you to do both fuzzy grouping and clustering of values in a text column. We'll show that to you in the demo as well. Uh, finally, last but not least, we're also making enhancements to the Power Query Online experience so that you can easily copy paste your queries between Power Query Desktop and Power Query Online. And also we are bringing the query diagnostics capabilities that you may have used within Power Query in the desktop. We're bringing them to Power Query Online, but we're also expanding beyond that. So an area that it's been recurring uh, area of feedback from many of you has been being able to clearly tell whether a step is folding, is being pushed down to the underlying data source or not, or being able to see the query plan and the underlying data source queries for, for each of those steps. We're actually starting to make some enhancements around that in the context of Power Query Online, uh, which should be coming over the next few months. So again, stay tuned for those uh, capabilities in the product uh, and uh, in the blog announcements uh, really soon. With that, let's actually let me show you a couple of demos around the text CSV by example and fuzzy grouping capabilities. The first feature that I want to show you is text by example in Power Query Desktop. This feature allows users to extract data from semi-structured text or CSV files, like in this sample file that I'm showing you, which contains repeating information from customers throughout the file. By going into the by example experience, customers can easily provide those sample values that they would like to extract. As you can see, the by example experience helps users by providing suggestions of the values uh, based on what they type. Once enough sample values have been specified, Power Query will figure out the magic steps to make happen. Users can then continue providing other sample values for fields that they would like to extract based on the same repetition pattern, like in this case, specifying a contact title or a phone number. After by example, users can actually land the output into the Power Query editor. And here you can actually see that the sequence of steps that Power Query identified were needed in order to perform this data extraction can be reviewed or adjusted from the steps pane. The second feature that I'm going to show you is passive grouping within Power Query Online, which allows the duplication and normalization of values like the ones captured in this table with uh, employee names. You may be familiar with the merge queries capabilities available in Power Query that included fuzzy matching logic in the past. This would allow users to combine data across different data sources using fuzzy logic, but it was not clearly uh, obvious to users how they would be able to leverage these capabilities from the group by column experiences. Classically, you would apply a group by operation to, for example, add up all of the total hours spent by week uh, by each of the employees in this table. And you would end up with repeated values with Bill, Billy, Will, as well as multiple variations of Miguel with typos and uppercase, lowercase differences. With the new fuzzy grouping capabilities in GroupBy, users are able to leverage the same fuzzy logic that they have available to them within the merge queries experience in order to get uh, normalized values, such as in this case, Bill and Miguel, However, notice how there's still a difference between Bill and William, which conceptually are the same values, but they're not that close for the fuzzy logic algorithm to figure out that they need to be combined. For that purpose, a synonyms table can be used as the input 
to the uh, group by uh, configuration of the transformation table that will make the two values be considered the same and uh, ultimately end up having Bill and Miguel as the two reconciled values. Fuzzy grouping will ship in Power Query Online in the next few weeks, and it will accrue value to all of the product integrations where Power Query Online and data flows are available. Thanks, Miguel. Awesome demos. So switching gears to data flow roadmap updates. So the features uh, uh, in front of you are either in progress or coming soon. So let's uh, quickly go over them. Enhanced compute will allow data flow customers to leverage Azure Synapse compute to increase the performance of analytical data flows. These are data flows that are stored in the lake. In scheduling and automation area, we're making a few improvements. We're adding the ability to refresh on specific dates and times in addition to refreshing on a frequency or uh, manually. We're also uh, making improvements to our backend to have a consistent uh, experience for data flow refresh that's uh, similar across Power BI, Power Apps, Customer Insight, data flows. In addition, we're releasing a data flow power automate connector, which will allow you to create flows that trigger when a data flow refresh completes. You'll be able to see the data flow refresh status and then also take action uh, like refreshing other data flows. So this will allow you to kind of combine data flows across Power BI, Power Apps, and with other services that once data completes refresh, you can actually go and take action in a different service. Uh, in the area of deeper integration with CDS, there's a lot of great things coming. So CDS performance improvements, we're improving load speeds, uh, increasing the load limits, and also uh, reacting to CDS uh, throttling events. All these changes will amount to higher speed and higher reliability for data flows that load data into CDS. In addition, uh, now you can create analytical data flows without having to connect your Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 to the environment. So by default, you'll have a data lake provided by Common Data Service that you can create analytical data flows um, and, and then use the data there in all the services that support data flows or the data flow connection. Solution awareness is an application lifecycle concept in Power Apps. It will allow you to package data flows with other artifacts in the environment and deploy them uh, between dev, test, and production environments, or package them to uh, share with other people. CDS entity mapping, we're making a few changes to the uh, map entities experience. Uh, smart defaults to allow you to just click next if you don't have any special configuration, and then auto-generated primary keys to simplify mapping uh, uh, keys in the data source to entities that have keys, uh, and then uh, single and multi-line uh, fields based on data profiling will auto-detect those. Finally, incremental refresh for data flows that load data into CDS. This is a feature that is already available for analytical data flows, but now you'll be able to configure a data flow to just grab the latest increment of data as opposed to reloading all the data at once. This will improve the overall performance of data flows and reduce the load on CDS. And with that, I'd like to demo uh, the Power Auto Automate connector in action. So for this next demo, I'm just going to walk you through really, really quickly uh, how to use Power Automate with the, the data flows we just created. So a Power Automate connector is coming soon for data flows. I can initiate a flow when a data flow refresh completes. I just need to select the workspace or environment it was created in. And then I can also trigger a refresh of a downstream uh, data flow. So the second data flow I created. But uh, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to make it a little fancier and add a condition. Um, I should probably refresh only if the original data flow, uh, the first data flow completed successfully. And if it fails, why don't I send an email to me and Miguel? Uh, and then I can use metadata from the trigger of the data flow to construct the email. So uh, in the subject, I'll use the data flow name to let us know uh, which data flow failed. And then I can um, author the email with uh, the parameters that I have from the uh, data flow refresh, like the again the name, the start time of the refresh, the end time, uh, and uh, yeah, status uh, of the data flow refresh. Now, once uh, the data flow refresh uh, completes, this flow is going to trigger and uh, initiate the other data flow. Now, I can also use the Power BI connector 
to trigger a data set refresh and then basically orchestrate the transformation of data, uh, loading it into CDS, and then also refreshing a report and dashboard that's built on top of the data. So this uh, connector is going to be uh, coming soon. And that's my second demo. Back to you, Miguel. Thank you, Ben. That was such an amazing demo. And I'm looking forward to seeing that capability in the product. I'm sure um, our customers will love to see that as well. We're getting towards the end of the session. And I just wanted to share a few pointers for where all of you can actually go to find out more and learn more about Power Query and data flows. Uh, your main place to go should be powerquery.com. Within powerquery.com, you're going to find the resources page, which is the screenshot you see here on the screen that actually has pointers to all the other product-specific uh, documentations, forums, uh, you know, ideas, uh, suggestions, uh, pages as well, where you can actually suggest features um, uh, for Power Query across all of these products. Um, I also wanted to call out the Power Query documentation site, the, the back screenshot that you see here, which is docs.microsoft.com slash Power Query. We've added over 50 different Power Query articles, new articles over the last month or two, and we continue to add more and more. This includes a full set of references for all of our connectors, uh, including troubleshooting guides, uh, prerequisites, and you know any other capabilities that need to be explained for each of those connectors. But also, you know, step by step and very uh, deep dive, uh, you know documentation resources for each of the transformations provided by Power Query, things like pivoting and pivoting, when, when is the right uh, situation to use one or the other, how do you go about using them, and really helping users get started with all of those advanced capabilities and uh, advanced transformations that Power Query provide. The last link is to the M language reference, which is the underlying formula language behind Power Query, so we have a full reference for all the functions available as well. With that, uh, this is the time for uh, thank you and uh, to actually, you know, in a regular year, this would have been the round for open Q&A. In this case, uh, all I can do is thank you for your presence and actually point you at our communities. Uh, we listen uh, to feedback and respond to questions there every single day. So please keep those coming and we really appreciate your attention and your feedback. Thank you and have a good one.